the psalm or the fasting. During the month of Ramadan, Muslims fast from sun up to sun down. This is not like a fast as we might come to know it, where we don't eat water or don't eat food and we only drink, stop it! Where we, where we don't uh, eat food for multiple days in a row. It's not like that at all. Muslims don't have water or food from sun up to sun down. But as soon as the sun sets, they go at it, okay? And as soon as the sun is about to rise, they go at it. Um, so it's a big social event, too. A lot of Muslims get together at these iftar dinners, uh, and they, they feed the poor at these dinners, and they, they have a big gathering, and it's a feast, so it's, it's very fun. And in fact, I would not be opposed at all if any of you want to engage Muslims and befriend them by going to an iftar dinner. They often invite people to come to iftar dinners during Ramadan. It's a time when they're expecting people to learn about their faith. Um, so they'll have their whole dawah spiel ready. Um, and of course, you're not going to buy what they say, uh, but you are going to show yourself as interested in faith matters, hoping that they'll be interested in your faith as well. So never go in deceptively, but definitely take advantage. Avail yourself of opportunities to become friends, and this is a good one. Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam. All Muslims are commanded to go to pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. And there's a lot of stuff we can talk about here, especially just how intricately woven, woven the pagan rituals are into the Hajj. There's a lot of things that predate Islam in the Hajj, pagan rituals that are woven in. In fact, almost all of Hajj is a pagan ritual. Um, but for now, what I want to say is this is extremely important to Muslims. Uh, you'll see there the, the mosque in Mecca. You'll see the black uh, box-looking structure there in the middle. That's called the Kaaba. And all Muslims pray facing the Kaaba. So around the world, you see Muslims pulling out compasses to figure out where the Kaaba is. And once they find the direction, that's the direction they're going to offer their Salat. And the closer and the closer you get to Kaaba, it's really cool. You'll start seeing a circle around the Kaaba. Um, and that's what's going on there. By the way, every little dot you see here is a person. This is the middle of the Hajj. So right now you have about 3 million people in this picture. A lot of trampling deaths occur during the Hajj, by the way. Uh, every year, you can always expect some trampling deaths to occur. And most Muslims consider it, well, let me, let me qualify that. Muslims who take stock in folk Islam consider it an honor to die during the Hajj and one of the two ways you can be guaranteed entrance into heaven, dying during the Hajj. So those are the five pillars. Those are the actions. Now understand, Islam is a very duty-based religion. Uh, the soteriology in Islam is if you do more good deeds than bad deeds, God will allow you into heaven. Essentially. That's a simplification, but essentially that's what it is. Now, is there an element of grace there? Muslims import an element of grace through the Hadith. Basically, Allah can multiply your good deeds if He wants to, and He can forget your bad deeds if He wants to, and in that way you will have done more good than bad, and you'll still enter into heaven. But fundamentally, it's still a works-based soteriology. And that is why the five pillars, which are works that God commands you to perform, are so important to Muslims. But they also have doctrines that are important. Foundational doctrine is belief in one God. All right? So you have the belief in one God. It's called Tawheed. You don't have to worry about that if you don't want. Um, but it's belief not only in one God, but that one God being absolutely Unitarian. The idea of the Trinity, understand the Trinity had been developed... 600 years, well, the Christian faith had been preaching the Trinity for many hundreds of years before Islam came around. So Islam didn't just have its own version of God, it was actually a formulated response to the Christian version of God. And so ingrained in the concept of Tawheed is how God cannot be a Trinity. And that's found in the Quran, and we'll talk about that some more. Other beliefs are beliefs in the unseen, often called the belief in angels, uh, angels and demons, however you want to call it. Muslims all believe that there are spiritual beings and there's a spiritual realm, and that's part of the six articles of faith. Muslims believe that there are prophets. You saw in the Y Islam um, summary that there are prophets who brought the message to the world. Um, here's a section of the Quran that makes it clear. Uh, we believe in Allah and that which is revealed unto us and that which was revealed unto Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and that which Moses and Jesus received and that which the prophets received from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and unto him have we surrendered. 
So interestingly, Basi, the Quran says that there is no distinction between any of the prophets. But then in verse 30, chapter 33, it said, Muhammad is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah is all aware of all things. Muslims take this to mean that Muhammad is the last of the prophets and he's the greatest of the prophets. So Muhammad has a special place amongst the prophets. And, and any kind of uh, rhetoric or propaganda you, re you receive from Y Islam or whatever that tries to make him equal to the others is really uh, a front. Every Muslim you talk to believes that Muhammad is the greatest man who ever walked on this earth. And really there is no accolade that you can give Muhammad that he doesn't deserve. He deserves all praises as a man. Um, he was the most generous man who ever walked on the earth. He was the most merciful. He was the most loving. He was the most giving. Uh, he was the most humble. He was the most wise. He was the best statesman. He was the best military leader. I mean, whatever you can come up with, they want to give it to him. Um, so you can see why, by the way, any criticism of Muhammad goes so directly against the grain for Muslims. It's everything they've ever been told is that Muhammad is the best person who ever walked, and that's the man they follow. In chapter 33, verse 21, Muslims are told to follow him. In chapter 68, verse 4, it says, His character is tremendous of an exalted standard. So even the Quran says that Muhammad is the superior kind of human.